Hi, my name is Meng and welcome to section 44 of my Swift UI course. Today we're going to learn how to detect the tap duration from the long press gesture and turn that into a progress animation. First of all, we need to duplicate this circle button and obviously we don't want to recode everything. So what we can do here is command click on circle button, jump to definition and command click on circle button again. And here you're gonna click on fold. So this is simply going to fold all the code inside the curly braces. This is very useful for organizing your code, especially when you have very long code where you have curly braces and you don't know where it ends. So what you can do is just command click on the curly braces or the component or the view, and then you can just fold that part. And that allows you to keep it short and easy to scan. Now, if you want to show it again, just double click on it and it's going to show all the content. At this point, we're just going to select all of this component called circle button and we're going to copy it. We're going to paste it right underneath. Then we're going to rename the button. We're going to call it pay button. And finally, we're going to scroll back to the top and we're going to include that new button. So pay button parentheses. Perfect. So I'm going to jump back to that pay button and we can start customizing it. The first thing we're going to need to do is to change the state that is called tab. We're going to change that into a gesture state instead. Then I'm going to scroll down to the gesture and I'm going to remove the unchanged event because we're going to use a different one. The one we're going to use is called dot updating and you can press enter using the auto completion. And for the state, we're going to use dollar sign tab, then press tab. And for the body, we can just delete it. And after the parentheses, we're going to do curly braces, enter. And right after the curly brace, we're going to receive a bunch of values from this event. The first one is going to be called current state, comma, then the next one is gesture state, but do not use the auto completion. Make sure it's camel case because this is a custom variable name that we declare to match the values that we're getting. Next type comma and then transaction in at the end. Then in the next line, we're going to type gesture state and make sure to use the one with the camel case again is equal to current state. So now we can resume and let's take a look at what's different. So this one, when I tap, it's just expands and go back right away. But here, the longer that I tap, the more that it expands and it stays expanded until the long press gesture kicks in. So why is this important? Well, thanks to that, the longer that I'm tapping, the more that it expands, which means that we can use that to create a progress animation. So let's do that. First of all, we're going to go to the frame and we're going to set it to 120 by 120. Inside the Z stack, we're going to remove the images and set a new image parentheses. And we're going to use an image from the assets catalog. But first, we're going to have to go to the assets catalog and then make sure that you have downloaded the new source files. And I'm going to go to assets. You're going to find fingerprint.pdf and fingerprint-2.pdf. So I'm going to drag and drop those two. If you already have these two assets, you don't need to do this step. So we're going to go back to buttons.swift. I'm going to close the navigator and resume. So for the image within the double quotes, we're going to write fingerprint. And then I'm going to create a clip animation. So first of all, I'm going to need to bring the second fingerprint image. So image parentheses, double quotes, fingerprint dash two. And for the second image, which is purple, I'm going to set a clip shape. So clip shape, I'm going to use a rectangle parentheses. So what this means is that I'm using a mask so I can reduce the size of this rectangle to hide a portion or I can use offset. Offset might be a little bit easier. So I'm going to do dot offset and I'm going to change the Y position. So let's say I set it to 50. You can see that it's completely hidden. If I set it to 40, it's going to show a little bit 
and the lower the number, the more I'm going to show that purple image. Let's set this to zero and animate this. Before zero, I'm going to type tap question mark. So zero means show the entire thing. Otherwise, set it to 50, which means hide the entire thing. Let's give this a test. I'm going to play the preview, then tap it. And voila, you can see that I have my progress animation. The bounce animation might be a little bit of a problem. So you can definitely change the animation on this specific element. So we can put dot animation dot is in out like this. I'm not going to have that bounce back anymore. OK, so next, what if when I long press, it's going to switch to a, a check mark? So let's create the check mark. So image parentheses system name. We're going to use SF symbols is check mark dot circle dot fill. Let's make it bigger. So dot font dot system size, weight and design. The size is going to be 44 weight dot light. And for the design, we can just delete it. We can color this. So foreground color, color parentheses, color lit. And we can choose any color we want. I'm going to choose the purple one. So let's start with a simple opacity animation. So we're going to do for the first image, which is fingerprint dot opacity. Press question mark. We're going to set it to zero, otherwise one. Then for the third image, which is the check mark, I'm going to set dot opacity. Press question mark, set it to one, otherwise zero. So you can see a little fade in, fade out. But we do have a bit of a problem with the fingerprint too. So we should also apply the same opacity animation. It's a little bit better. Another thing that I like to do is the scale effect. So I'm going to add dot scale effect, then type inside the parentheses press question mark, I'm going to set it to zero, otherwise one. And let's copy and paste the same for fingerprint two, as well as the third image, but I'm going to reverse the number. So one, otherwise zero. So now you're going to see a very neat scale effect. Let's have some more fun and let's add a ring animation. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and right after clip shape, I'm going to set dot overlay. Inside the overlay, I'm going to set my indentation. First of all, I'm going to set a circle parentheses. Let's set the trim first. So dot trim. Let's use the option with the from and to values. From is going to be, let's say 0 0.3 to one. As we've learned previously, this is the Apple Watch ring and we are basically trimming a portion of the circle. And it looks weird right now, but if we only use a stroke, it's going to look better. So after trim, we're going to type dot stroke and we're going to select the one that says content and stroke style. For the content, let's set a color for now. So let's say blue, color dot blue. And for the style, we're going to set stroke style parentheses and we're going to use all of these options for the line width we're going to set it to five the line cap dot round and for the rest of the options i'm just going to delete them because i don't need them so this is looking pretty good i'm just going to change the frame i'm going to set it to width 88 height 88 and I'm going to make sure that we're going to start at the same position as the Apple Watch ring. So I'm going to do a little bit of rotation and 3D rotation. So let's do dot rotation effect. Set angle parentheses degrees set it to 90. Then dot rotation 3D. And I'm going to use the first option again, angle parentheses degrees going to set it to 180. For the axes, I'm going to set the X axis to 1, Y to 0, and Z to 0. Let me just fix the indentation. And now you can see that it's starting from the top and clockwise finishing 
like this. Okay, so now we can do the animation. Right now we're gonna use the from value, set it to nothing, to a fill, but the way that this value works is that the lower the number, the more complete it is. So I'm gonna type tap question mark, set it to 0 0.001, otherwise one. So by default, there's no progress. And at the end of the animation, I'm using a very small number to set my completion. And if I test this, you can see that it works. Likewise, we have a bit of a bouncing animation, so we can remove that by adding the animation modifier and we can use dot is in out as well. So now it doesn't bounce anymore. All right, so before we finish, I just want to add a little bit of a gradient and a little bit of a drop shadow. So I'm going to go to the stroke and instead of the color blue, I'm going to use a linear gradient. So let me just delete color.blue and I'm going to summon linear gradient. And for this, I'm going to set the starting point to dot top leading and the end point dot bottom trailing. For the colors, I'm going to use color literals. So color parentheses, color lit. Let me use purple. And for the second color, I'm going to do the same. So color parentheses, color lit here and set it to a slightly lighter tone of purple. Then I'm going to add the drop shadow. So right after rotation 3D effect, I'm going to add dot shadow with the color. Again, color parentheses, color lit. And I'm going to set purple. The radius is going to be 5x3, y3. Then I'm going to set the opacity of my color. So dot opacity, set it to 0.3. So that's it. This is what I have so far. I think this looks pretty awesome. I hope you enjoyed this section and I really can't wait to see what kind of amazing concepts you're going to create with this technique. I think you're going to enjoy the next session as well because we're going to do haptic feedback. That's what's missing in all of this. It's going to make your button so tactile and respond with different strength of haptic feedback. So I'll see you in the next session.